Welcome everyone back to a reaction video. Today we're going to look at the 7 levels of math that is made by Neanderthal. So, well that's a pretty interesting name I have to say. You know, as a kid, I used to like math a lot. I liked it so much that I used to do it during my free time. And I was on my way to becoming the Jimmy Neutron, the, fin the Phineas and Ferb, you know, the smart characters in TV shows. And for consecutive years, like a dog who sticks by its owner, I was loyal to math. My answer to the question asked most during school, what's your favourite subject, has always been, without fail, math. I think one thing that's interesting is the fact that unlike other subjects, you can actually get full marks for mathematics. People can't penalise you because of subjective distastes in your answers. It's correct means it's correct, and there's no other reason why it shouldn't be the case. Oh. After the honeymoon phase had worn off, we stopped calling each other cute nicknames, and mathematics and I experienced some minor hurdles. So I'm going to be going through the levels of mathematics I've gone through, and why I've come to dislike it more and more throughout the years. I think almost everyone I've known uh, who loved math at school would hit a point where they're like, I can't do this anymore. Uh, for me, that would be in my third year of undergrad studies, I was learning about measure theory. That was painful. <laughs> so maybe I'll do a reaction to, a, to real analysis uh, later on. Level one, counting. We all did it. Some of us still do. Counting with your fingers. Jimmy has four apples and Eve gave him an extra two. How many apples does Jimmy have? You'd look at your fingers, start with four and raise two extra and then you count. Easy. And you might think that this will only work up to 10 because we have 10 fingers, but no, I had a way to count up to 30. If you look wow. at your fingers, there's three sections for each finger. And I think someone ever came up with a way to count 32, uh, count to 32 using powers of two. So like sort of uh, your hand here represents binary digits. So this sort of represents one, 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 one in binary. And what happens is that this can be counted as 32. Uh, for example, this will be zero, this will be one, this will be, well, if I can do it, two, you know, and so on and so forth. So um, you can go 32 here and I think if you, have 10 fingers, you get 1,024, whatever 2 to the 10 is. I got it from 3 blue, 1 brown's video, so that's the, that's interesting. Instead of a full finger, you can count up to 15 numbers on each hand. And if you use both hands, it's now 30. At this level of math, I remember the teacher used to ask questions at school, and after a few seconds of fiddling around with our fingers, or what looked like casting a spell, our arms would take off to get picked to answer the question, marking the start of the relationship with math for the most of us. There is an ego boost associated with being good at math. When I was in primary school, I dubbed myself as the self-proclaimed math genius. Uh, I had I held down to that title for quite some time until uh, Measure Theory killed me. So let me know if you want me to do a video on that. Level 2. Mental Math So the finger counting is only good when you're adding and subtracting things less than 10 or 30 with the technique I showed. But when you get questions with bigger numbers like 32 plus 12, we're forced to use our brains a little bit more. I figured I couldn't add extra fingers on myself and even if I could, I didn't want my hands to look like a star-nosed mole. So, to bypass this physical limitation, I thought about the idea of drawing dots on myself. The only bad thing about this is that the teacher told me to wash off the dots the next day, because I guess the topic was mental math and not counting. But eventually, I learned how you were supposed to solve questions that didn't or couldn't have physical representations for. <laughs> This reminds me of those uh, problem sums where uh, Jack bought 100 carrots or some ridiculous amount like that. Further climbing up the mountain of mathematics. Level 3, Speedy Math. This was my favourite. Remember those math sheets we used to get with maybe 15 questions? I remember zooming through these questions. No more mental math. No more drawing dots on myself. I remember the teacher would give us a sheet of questions and test us every morning. And the top 5 people to finish first with no mistakes got a sticker. I had 4 stickers on my pencil case and if someone was bothering me during class, all I had to do was ask a simple question. How many stickers do you have? <laughs> uh, I remember when I was in primary school, I remember we would go through the past year papers. I think it was our last year prior to the exams. And what I would do is complete my corrections, right? Complete whatever I need to complete. Let my friends who are sitting uh, with me copy my work. And then uh, if the teachers were to ever walk towards our table, we just show them that, hey, we've done our work. And I remember printing poker cards <laughs> and bringing them into the classroom. And then we would just play poker cards. And I remember one day uh, the teacher saw it and confiscated that. 
if the teacher did scold me, I forgot about it. But I remember when he did confiscate the cards, I was just laughing because <laughs> I didn't spend a single cent on it. I I almost spent a bit of printing money, printing paper. But otherwise, uh, that was pretty cool. Completely soul crushing. I was responsible for that annoying kid's childhood trauma. Level 4, adding letters. For me, my positive experience with math ends here. Level 4 marks the start of my turbulent relationship with math. Okay, wait, pause. I want to take a look at some of the math equations there. Ends here. Level 4. Uh, look at this. This is a system of linear equations. This is four equations in four unknowns. You can probably solve it with some linear algebra or substitution or whatever method you want. Probably you can inverse some, invert some matrix if you really wanted to. Do a bit of Gaussian elimination if these things make sense to you. Marks the start of my turbulent relationship. With and there's a famous quadratic equation, obviously, uh, because I'm the kind of person who casually toss the word obviously when it's not even obvious. <laughs> okay. Uh, it helps you solve degree to polynomials. I'm not sure if that makes sense, but you know, it is what it is. Math. My understanding was we have numbers for math and letters for English. That's how it was. But then they started adding random letters in with the numbers. Now this equation uh, is a very special function. I think some of you math nerds out there would know. Uh, this actually it characterizes what we would call the exponential function. It started off with a couple of letters, x's and y's. But then math started bringing in more letters, n's, z's, and an e. Uh, you have your natural numbers, your, your integers. I think integers are called Zahlen in German, and that's where you get the z notation for integers. <laughs> but a line was crossed when they added Greek letters. Al Yes, it's all about the Greek letters. Um, you usually have theta to represent angles, alpha as well, the basic angle. Alpha and beta tends to be used for roots. Uh, epsilon and delta tend to be used uh, at the uh, college level when you prove limits. Check out the video if you wish. You have lambda and mu uh, to represent parameters in equations of lines and planes. In probability, we use omega to denote sample space. Other notations tend to appear in physics rather than mathematics. Beta, beta. It was now apparently a language class as well. What happened to good old numbers? But all I'm saying is that in English, we didn't have to count the number of vowels and multiply it by the consonants. Level 5. Triangles. I remember, in the final stages of secondary school, if you miss a class, it's game over. Just like tripping over at the start of a 100 meter sprint, you aren't catching up. There was Ah, uh, yes. Um, this is the one joy and pain of mathematics. It's so progressive one after another that it really takes a lot of time to build up to the theory you want to talk about. Although I've been switching up the format a little bit, I've decided, you know what, let's just dive into the fun stuff. And if you guys are interested, I'll do a video on the more nitty-gritty technical bits. I had to take a week off, and when I came back to school, I saw this. Oh, this is the bane of every high school student. Everything in this looks alright. With the exception of the degree symbol on the 90. There should be a degree symbol here. And there should be a degree symbol here because if you don't have degrees, uh, I'm going to assume you're using radians. And in terms of radians, these two formulae are obviously not true. You know what? My fault. I should have just stayed at home. I think I have, I have a video on trigonometry. Either it's up or it will be up. Uh, where I actually prove all of this formula. So... It's somewhere in some link somehow. You can go check it out. So, don't get me wrong. I can appreciate the look and the taste of a Dorito. I can even appreciate the aerodynamic efficiency of that yellow angry bird that goes fast. Or, if I was in ancient Egypt making pyramids, I'm all ears. But we're not in ancient Egypt, we're not making pyramids, and I need to cut down my consumption of pizza, not increase it. Level 6. Calculus and above. This is the fun part of math. I think I remember at the uh, secondary level, I heard a lot of my seniors struggling with trigonometry and calculus. And out of spite almost, you know, out of just wanting to prove people wrong, because I take joy in proving people wrong, uh, I'm like, come, let's learn trigonometry and calculus properly. And uh, yeah, it worked. Trigonometry was actually made a ton of sense to me. And so did calculus. All the way to, 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 to year two of, of, of my undergrad studies, actually. That wasn't too bad. Once we got to measure theory, that's when things got difficult. <laughs> Just, yeah, things got difficult. 
To anyone who was unfortunate enough to undergo the insufferable topic that is calculus. Come on, it's not that bad. It's, it's, it's I mean, it, it, it can be challenging, but it's not that bad. I mean, it's, it's fine. In fact, it's, these equations on the board are pretty useful, right? Because you have E equals MC squared here, you know, as, um, when V is small. You have probabilities of continuous random variables. You have, I think there's probably something along the lines of intensities uh, in physics. And a few differential equations. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. Come on. Calculus is seen as a final boss in math. And for a topic that is meant to derive, I feel that I derive nothing but a slight loading for math as a whole. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because calculus is seen as a final boss, but then at the university level, at the college level, uh, it's like the baseline. Fundamental is like right there, and then um, you learn the proofs behind it in real analysis and whatnot. Because calculus is challenging, don't get me wrong, and then there's real analysis, and real analysis takes effort. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. And the only integration it had achieved was that of our collective resentment for math. Calculus. Okay, let's see. Uh, yeah, these equations look pretty standard stuff there. Some antiderivatives. You have the fundamental of calculus over here. You have simple harmonic motion. I, I don't know what these equations are representing, but um, you have some stationary points, inflection points, minimums, and uh, local maximums. To be more precise, you use the word local maximum, not, not, not maximum. This equation looks wrong because this should be 1 over x. It's fine. This taught us to find our limits as we approached a breakdown, and also it taught us to never trust titles on YouTube videos. <laughs> I've actually never used Organic Chemistry Tutor. I did use Khan Academy uh, when trying to learn calculus in a bit more detail. I think it's through Khan Academy I learned implicit differentiation when school hasn't really taught it yet. So uh, that was interesting. Uh, but surprisingly, I, I've actually never used um, Organic Chemistry Tutor. After countless hours of studying with classical music playing, thinking it will make you smarter, something clicks in your brain, making you feel like a genius for getting a question right. But for the harder questions, you're- Um, I, I don't think I can really find the entire derivative. I, I think it, it may be possible. This might be possible. You probably want to use a substitution, roughly speaking. And I think done rightly, my- Intuition tells me that lots of the algebra sort of cancel themselves out. I think. <laughs> I think. I'm not too sure. Random letters and numbers, hoping it's right. But if it's one of those extended questions where a question is based on a previous question, you sit there and accept the fate of a bad grade. You know, so there, there is a little trick here. Um, I, I, in, in the A-levels, right, because that's what I did, uh, there are these things called hence questions. And usually what happens is, for hence questions, one of two things can happen. Either the first question gives you an answer which you can use for the second part, or it doesn't. Now, if it doesn't, then we are in this class of situations. But if the first question is a proof that you have this nice formula, right, and then part two is based on that, you can just sort of take that and plug it into your solution for question two, even if you haven't exactly solved the first question yet. So that is a little trick uh, to, to, to do at the A-levels. Eventually, after many repetitions of what seems like the worst human- Oh gosh, uh, what do we have here? A bunch of geometric series and the sum of squares. Yes, that's correct. The summation there, I think you can actually calculate it using uh, geometric series. Like these two sums, you can calculate using a geometric series. Probably don't need a telescoping sum. This is, I believe, the equations pertaining romance. I think so, uh, along that line, but it is what it is human experience possible, you move on to level 7. Level 7. Quit or finish. After a long journey exploring a glimpse of what mathematics has to offer, level 7 is the end of learning math. At yeah, I, I guess, I guess, sort of. Not exactly, but sort of, yeah. At least from an academic standpoint, the highs and the lows, the late nights and early mornings. What was it all for? They often felt like the topics in math had no utility in our immediate lives. Um, okay, so what you have right there in that here, I think this is what we call entropy. I will be honest to say that I've not studied that in full detail, but I've seen this formula somewhere. I did have to use a formula, something like this, called the callback liable divergence. I think there's some connection there, but I'm not too sure. This looks like Navier-Stokes, although I'm not too sure about that. This is definitely in terms of quantum mechanics. You have a Schrodinger equation here. Probably a Fourier transform. That's my guess. This is probably a Fourier transform. I do not know what this equation is, but it looks like it probably involves some form of kinematics. My guess is that V is velocity and S is displacement, but, but it could be something else, so context. Excluding the fundamental skills discussed in the earlier levels, the ability to apply what we've learned in a meaningful way seems to be limited. Yes and no. So I guess if you're talking about the actual use of the actual formulas, not as much. 
uh, today I just had an interview and they were advertising that we could use math to solve problems. And when I got to the interview, the interviewers explicitly mentioned that they want to keep the math as simple as possible because we just want to solve the problem at hand. And that's fair. And I told them, hey, I'm all for simple math. But what I can bring to the table, having graduated from math, is the thought process. Like for example, here it says, find the volume of an apple using calculus. That's the point. The point is you know that you have this tool that you can use to find this quantity and you can actually make the connection yourself. In a sense, the, the real issue is find a volume of an apple and that you can take a bunch of different tools to get there. For example, maybe dip the apple into some water or perform some integration if you wish. Uh, but the point is that you have a toolkit of strategies to solve problems. That's the key when it comes to math, in my opinion. It's not that you actually use the formulas, although there are some domains where you do, but the idea of having this flexible way of approaching problems and knowing how to source out independently locations where these problems can be solved. That's the idea. We were taught to solve for why, but didn't know how to solve the why. But with a subject with so many problems, and depending on... Uh, let's see. Uh, yes, you have the arithmetic mean. This year's the collect conjecture. Uh, yeah, these calculations look sufficiently... Uh, yeah, this looks solved. Asked to solve them, it was a red flag from the beginning. And with most of the world requiring students to study mathematics, it seems like a toxic relationship forced upon us. I guess there are a few more levels if you do math at the college level. But if you want to check out a video where you have horrible math notation, even for a math person, click on the video here.